Hello and welcome to our virtual tour of Framingham State University. My name is Jess. I'm a senior chemistry major with a math minor. And my name is Rachel. I'm a sophomore political science major with a concentration in pre-law. So today for our first stop on the virtual tour, we're going to be going over the admissions welcome center. This is typically where our physical tours would take off from, but it's also a space where prospective students and their families can come to discuss different aspects of the school with admissions counselors and people like Jess and I, student admissions representatives. The next stop on our Framingham State virtual tour is the McCarthy Center, which is our student hub on campus. The McCarthy Center is home to some important offices, but also some classrooms, so it's usually a high spot of traffic during the day for our students. The first thing that you see when you walk into the McCarthy Center right on the right of the building is the Student Transportation Center desk. The Student Transportation Center is a service that students can use to get around campus, whether you are a resident or commuter student. We'll talk more about that when we get to the actual Ram Tram stop that's located on campus, but just know that that is a free service that students can use. The next thing that you see is our brand new Dunkin' Donuts, which was built last spring semester. The great part about this Dunkin' is that it's fully functioning and has everything that you would find at an off-campus Dunkin', except it's located conveniently right in our student center. You can use five different forms of payment methods here at Duncan. You can use cash credit debit, Ram cash, or dining dollars. We'll talk more about what Ram cash and dining dollars mean when we get down to the dining services office, but just know that those are the forms of payment that we have. Also conveniently located in the McCarthy Center is our game room, which is open 24-7 and houses some console and board games. The Masmanian Art Gallery, which features works from outside in the community in the Metro West area, but also some student works as well. The 1839 Room and the Alumni Room, which are two meeting spaces, and also the Student Lounge, which houses a print center and also some convenient study spaces. Some of the offices that are very prominent that are located in the McCarthy Center are part of the Student Services Center, Financial Aid, the Registrar's Office, and Student Accounts. You can find all of these offices up on the fifth floor for all of your student needs. And also located on the fourth floor is the Career Services Office. The Career Services Office is a great tool as they help with resume building, mock interviews, and even have a closet where you can borrow professional clothing for an interview or an internship. The Career Services Office is also a great tool because even after you graduate, you can still utilize their services. So five or ten years down the road, even if you wanted to go in for another mock interview again, you could. All right, so the next stop on our campus tour is the dining hall. There are plenty of options to eat, and it is buffet style, so you do swipe once, and then you can stay for as long as you want and eat as much as you want. So the different options in the dining hall, there is a vegan station, there's a main line, so your well-balanced meal, there's a salad bar, burgers, dogs, fries, there's always a bunch of different kinds of pizza, there's an allergy station, we do cater to the eight most common allergies. If you do have any other dietary restrictions, you just talk to dining services, and we, they will make you something separate gluten-free room, there's a toaster so you can make bagels, English muffins, toast whenever you want, any time of the day. There's cereal, stir-fry option, there's an omelet station that's open from 7.30 to 2.30 every day, and then a deli station as well. So plenty of options that you can have at the dining hall. Dining hall is open from 7.30 to 9.30 Monday through Friday, and then opens at 10.30 to 9.30 Saturday and Sunday. So, for the next stop on the virtual campus tour, we're going to be going over two of the dining options that are located within the McCarthy Center. But before we do that, I just wanted to cover what I meant by Ram Cash and dining dollars when we were talking about Duncan. So just like before when we were talking, I said um, that you could use the three standard payment methods at Dunkin Donuts, which are cash, credit, and debit, but you can also use two Framingham State specific payment methods as well, which are dining dollars and Ram Cash. First off is dining dollars. Dining dollars are specific to the meal plan that you purchase through the dining services team. Um, so like Jess was saying, you either get 14, 19, or unlimited swipes per week. You also get either 100 or 150 dining dollars per semester. These do not roll over, but they do refresh at the beginning of the semester with whatever meal plan you choose. So those are kind of like an allowance system, and you can use that at any of the dining locations across campus. Ram Cash is a Kind of similar, but a little different at the same time. Ram Cash is more of a debit card system where you upload money onto your account. Um, I even have some friends who say that they ask family or friends from out of town for holidays to just upload money onto their Ram Cash account just so that they can use it across campus. But Ram Cash is also kind of different because you can use it at any of the dining locations, or you can use it to do laundry in your residence hall, you can use it at the bookstore, or you can use it at any off um, some off-campus locations as well, such as Subway. Volturno, which is the pizza place across the street, Gelato Place, or um, 
the Whole Foods down Route 9 as well. So now that we covered the different payment methods that you have on campus, let's cover some of your options that you have to spend that money. So the first option that you would have is the snack bar, which comes right before the dining the commons entrance. So at the snack bar, there's grab and go snacks, an icy machine, mochi, and even a made to order sushi bar in the back. They take cash credit debit, Ram cash, and dining dollar payments. Right down the way, you would then see Metamorphosis, which was just enacted last fall semester. Metamorphosis, as the name entails <laughs> is that it changes very often. So every month or so, um, the dining services team sends out a survey to the Framingham State community and the, the students and staff and faculty all pick a new theme for what goes into metamorphosis. We've had everything from Buddha, which is Mediterranean food with falafel, we've had grilled cheese, and we've even had a custom mac and cheese bar as well. They take cash credit debit, Ram cash, and dining dollars. The next stop in the corner that you would see is the Ram's Den Grill, which is great because it's got lots of fried food. Everything from burgers, french fries, onion rings, quesadillas, basically anything you could think of. Best part about it is that it's actually open till 12 or 1 in the morning sometimes, so if you get a hankering for chicken tenders, it can totally be satisfied by the Ram's Den Grill. It also accepts the payment methods of cash, credit, debit, Ram cash, and dining dollars. Our next stop is the Forum, which is an event space that is located within the McCarthy Center. It's very big, so lots of events are held here. My favorite one personally that gets held in the Forum is the Health and Wellness Fair because they get to bring the therapy dogs and they are the sweetest things ever. The next stop is the Dining Services Office. This is where we would show off our, to our physical tours what the Dining Services team has to offer in terms of meal plans, price points, and whatnot, but you can always make sure to go onto the FSU Dining website to check them out for yourself. Also, just another point is that you can change your meal plan up until the ad drop period of classes, which is a week after classes begins. So if you realize that maybe you want to change your meal plan around, you have up until this period to do so. We also have a dietitian who works for the school who actually graduated from our food and nutrition program. So if you had any dietary restrictions or concerns, you could always go to talk to her about them. Next is our university police and ID office. Obviously your ID is very important as it gets you into the dining hall and as we'll talk about later, it also gets you into your residence hall. So if you lose it or break it, it's very important to replace. It's $15 and the office is open from nine to five Monday through Friday. The University Police Office kind of speaks for itself. If you had any concerns about safety or anything in general, you could always go down to talk to them and an officer is more than willing to help you. But if you're also a resident student and need a parking pass for someone who is visiting campus, that's where you would go to find one with the plate number and just some general information so that the University Police Office knows who's staying on campus. Okay, so we're going to look at our first of seven residence halls, which is West Hall. That is at the bottom of Maynard Hill. It opened in fall of 2016. This houses approximately 316 freshmen, sophomore, juniors, and seniors. They are two bedroom suites that have shared bathrooms within the suite. So the bedrooms feature high ceilings, large windows, radiant heat panels, and that are built into the room walls, which is kind of cool. Uh, there is a media room on the sixth floor that has a huge like TV, so some events that RAs will put on will Attend, like happen up there or um, just a big room to hang out with any of your friends which is kind of cool. So up the hill from West Hall is another one of our seven residence halls, Lindsley Hall. Lindsley accommodates approximately 160 residents in traditional double occupancy rooms as well as six and eight person suites. Lindsley Hall is actually the only residence hall that has air conditioning as well because that's where our summer students will stay during the duration of the summer period in between the fall and spring semesters. Right across from Lindsley Hall is the Honors House, a space that's exclusive only to the Honors Program students. The Honors House offers Honors students 24-7 access to a quiet study space. It has Wi-Fi, a television, a printer, a small refrigerator, microwave, and a coffee maker. It's also a wonderful place for students to gather, study, talk, work on group projects, or just relax and hang out. So the next of our seven residence halls is North Hall. North Hall is actually now being renamed Miles Bibb Hall, but it opened in the fall of 2011, and this is our only resident hall that it does not house first-year students. It's a co-ed building that has 410 beds in a combination of four-person suites and conjoined double and single rooms. Every single suite has a private bathroom as well. 
Across from the entrance of North Hall is another one of our dining options on campus, Sandela's. Sandela's is also a great option because just like the Rams Den Grill, it's sometimes open till 12 or 1 in the morning, so you can always get your late night craving satisfied. Sandela's has a ton of meal options though, including rice bowls, flatbread pizzas, soups, salads, and even some milkshakes as well. There's also a grab and go snack section as well, and Sandela's takes all the same payment options as before, cash credit debit, Ram cash, and dining dollars. Sandel is also housed in a unique program as well called Rams on the Run. It's an opportunity for students to use their meal swipes that they would have used at the dining hall to grab some snacks in Sandel's as well, including everything from pre-made sandwiches to salads and also drinks and snacks as well. Our next stop is May Hall. It's our oldest academic building on campus. It houses art, English, history, politics, and government major classes. Um, the top floor contains... A extensive studio facilities for painting, printmaking, sculpture and drawing, graphic design, Mac Lab is on the top floor which is primarily used for studio art majors and then it was renovated in 1982 to include skylights. Across from May Hall is Foster Hall which is our counseling and health and wellness center. You do have to have health, and health insurance to come to Framingham State. If you have your own you can just wave that right off your bill but if you don't they will provide it for you. Um, through the Health and Wellness Center. It is open from Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5. Walk-in times are Monday through Friday from 2.30 to 3.30 with no appointment necessary. But if you would like to make an appointment, you can just call, make an appointment, or you can walk in, make an appointment however you see fit. To the right of Foster Hall is O'Connor Hall. This used to be a residence hall before West was built, but now it's just an office building for advisors, faculty, and professors, and there's also the advising center in there. Our next stop on the Framingham State Virtual Tour is Hemingway Hall, which is our main academic building on campus. Primarily a classroom building with lecture halls, extensive laboratories, and even some department offices. Some of the departments and majors that it calls home are biology, business administration, geography, math, computer science, physics and earth science, and also fashion design and retailing. There are display cases in the main lobby that are used to showcase student works from the consumer sciences and also food science. There is a lab connected to Hemingway Hall, which is interconnected by Hemingway Annex. We are going to talk about Hemingway Labs later, but just know that all of these buildings are actually interconnected, which you'll see more later. There's a computer center on the first floor of Hemingway that provides services for both administration and students. We're going to talk more about printing and how that works on campus when we get to the library where we will talk about our main IT help desk. There's also a child development lab run by the education department that offers quality early childhood education to preschool aged children for Framingham State University and the surrounding communities. And early childhood education majors practice what they are learning in the classroom in this setting as well. There's also another early childhood center located on campus managed by the education department. The education students will now be able to work in this center for internships and field study experiences with young children and their families. So the next residence hall that we are going to look at is Corinne Hall Towers. It was opened in 1973. There's a it's an 11-story co-ed high-rise. It is the tallest building in Framingham. little fun fact for you. Um, there's four wings per floor, so there's the north, east, south, and west. Um, they're mostly double rooms with minimal numbers of singles. Also located on the 11th floor is our honors floor. If you are interested in the honors program, you can live there. You can apply to live there when you fill out your resident application, but it's not required if you are in the honors program that you live on that floor. The next residence hall is Larned Hall, which is a six-floor co-ed building housing approximately 370 residents. The second floor is the quiet floor, so if you do want a space where it is a little bit quieter in the residence hall, that would probably be better for you. And then a vast majority of the rooms are doubles, but the building also includes three or four person occupancy rooms. Just a quick couple little general information tidbits about the residence halls as well. We can accommodate nearly 2,000 students in all of our seven residence halls. All the residence halls have high efficiency front loading washers and dryers, which are FSU ID and coin operated using the RAM cash system that we talked about earlier. Every floor or area has an assigned RA, which is a resident assistant, which is a student staff member. There are separate bathroom facilities designated by gender in addition to a limited number of single user bathrooms in all of the residence halls. 
The residence halls have wireless network access and all of the rooms are wired for campus cable TV and residents are provided a base cable TV programming lineup including movie channels. Except for North Hall, all of the residence house, halls house both first year and upperclassmen students, but students tend to associate by clubs, sports courses, and not by academic standing. In terms of roommates, the primary factor in floor placement is done by academic major, so if you don't already know somebody that you want to be placed with, we'll place you by major. Obviously, we understand that that does not work out, so you can always feel free to go reach out to our Office of Residence Life, and they'll be more than willing to help you get accommodated. In terms of what you can and can't bring to school, we do have a list of approved appliances that you can look at in our um, Guide to Residence Living that's located on our Residence Life webpage. But just a couple things that you can't bring, um, anything with an open flame such as candles or a hot plate um, and no big tapestries, anything that could possibly catch the building on fire. You can rent a micro fridge from FSU. Quantities are limited, but this item is allowed because it uses less wattage than appliances plugged in separately. The micro fridge can be rented for $225 a year and is set up in the room at the beginning of the year and then it's then returned at the end of the year to the Residence Life lobby. Best part about it is if anything happens to it, maintenance will come in and fix it or replace it for free. In terms of security inside of the residence halls, each hall has a security desk staffed 24 hours a day by a trained student security desk attendant, which we call an SDA. The front doors are locked 24 hours a day, but students must scan their student ID to get in. The only building that you can scan into when you are a resident here at Framingham is your own. Security cameras are placed at the end of each resident hall lobby and in certain common areas and hallways. All resident students must have a valid student ID to enter the building using the card reader. All students must present their student ID to the security desk attendant at the front, and all bags brought into the residence halls are subject to inspection by SDA staff as we are a dry campus, so no alcohol or illicit substances are allowed. Guest policy entails that residents are generally allowed a maximum of three guests at a time. They sign these guests in and out and relinquish their student ID, as well as the ID of the guests upon signing in at the security desk. Residents of the campus must be signed into a building as a guest of the building that is not their own. Guests are to remain with the resident at all times while in the building, and no guest may be signed into a residence hall for more than three nights during a seven-day period. And in terms of minor guest policy, if you want to sign in anyone who is under the age of 18 that does not have a government-issued ID, you just have to get a minor guest pass signed for them through the Office of Residence Life. All right, so the next thing is the, our Henry Whittemore Library. So it houses our IT desk. We do have a recommended laptop. It's about $1,000, but it is guaranteed for the four years that you're here. So if anything was to happen to it, they will help you out in fixing it. We have a print shop, copy center. There's plenty of study rooms. We are part of the Minuteman Library Network, which is uh, all local libraries. There's 43 members, so it includes borrowing privileges with all other libraries in the Minuteman Network and all libraries in the mass public higher education system. The academic departments that are located in the library are communication art, music, and modern languages. Also in the library is Red Barn Cafe. You can use any of the five payments, cash, credit, debit, dining dollars, and RAM cash. Also, there is our curriculum library, which is a resource center for education majors. It contains K through 12 collections of textbooks, curriculum guides, software, education tapes, games, kits, iPads, and children and young adult literature. Across campus, there are many printing stations, including Hemingway Hall, in the library, the McCarthy Center, and in CASA. You do get 350 pages per semester. If you do run out by any chance, you just go to IT and they'll add on uh, more for free. It is all included in your library fee, so there's no need to pay anything extra. Okay, so the next stop on the virtual tour is Hemingway Labs. Hemingway Labs, as if you remember from Hemingway Hall, is interconnected, and it's connected in between Hemingway, um, it's connected through Hemingway Annex, if that makes any sense. So it's Hemingway Hall, then into Hemingway Annex, and then you would walk into Hemingway Labs. The lab is an addition that was completed in September of 2015 and houses the following majors, food and nutrition, chemistry, food science, and biology. Each one of the labs cost approximately a million dollars and there were 16 new labs added in the addition. 
It's also fully accessible, sustainable, and includes fully functioning and modern chemistry and biology labs. These labs are great because it, the building is also soundproof as well, so it makes for a great study space even if you don't have to take a lab at some point. Although in your general education requirements is a lab requirement, so you will be spending some time in Hemingway Labs at some point in your college career here at FSU. The next building is Dwight Hall, which is our main administrative office building. It was constructed in 1937 and renovated in 2007. It also houses the Performing Arts Center, which is DPAC, and some classrooms. It's the site for plays, dance recitals, speakers, and comedians. Some of the offices that are in Dwight is Administration Executive Offices, University President, the Office of International Education, which is Study Abroad, Admissions Processing, the Business Office, Office of Graduate Studies, and the Offices of Continuing Ed and Veteran Services. So if you continue walking through Dwight Hall, you actually end up in our athletic center, but on the top floor that you walk into is our fitness center. So the fitness center is open from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. on the weekdays, then on the weekends it flips, and it's open from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. All of the equipment that's within it, you just need to scan your FSU ID to use, and anything that's open in the building, if you walked into it, you would see that there are some machines that are not behind the glass. You're able to use those as long as the building is open. We also do offer free exercise classes as well, including Zumba, kickboxing, jump roping, and spinning that you are able to attend as well. There is no additional fee to students for the use of these facilities. All you have to do is have a valid student ID. When you walk down from the fitness center, you will still be in the athletic center, which um, contains our juice bar, so anything from coffee, tea, smoothies, on-the-go snacks that you can purchase using cash, credit, debit, or anything on your FSU ID, dime dollars, or RAM cash. Our bookstore is also in there. They do price match, which is definitely a good thing. Um, books are pretty expensive, so saving money any way you can is definitely a good thing. Our athletic offices are also in there. We are a Division three school, so if you are interested in playing a varsity sport, that would be the place to go, or you can always do the Recruit Me tab on the athletics page. Going down another flight of stairs, is our main gymnasium, which is 500 plus seats, our visitor and home locker facilities, general use locker facilities. You do need your FSU ID to use them, athletic training office, equipment room, trophy case, and restrooms behind the trophy case as well. Just so. Next, we have the last of our two residence halls, Purse Hall and Horace Mann Hall. Purse Hall is actually an all-female dorm because when Framingham State was founded in 1839, it was an all-girls school, so to keep the charm, we actually kept it as an all-female dorm. It's actually all mostly singles as well, so if you are looking for a more private style of living, then that is definitely an option for you. It usually houses mostly upperclassmen as they want their own space, but freshman students are definitely able to pick to live in Purse as well. Horace Mann Hall is a co-ed dorm standard to what Towers or Learned would look like, and it's mostly double style, but also some suites as well. So right behind Purse what we like to call the Purse Annex is home to our Center for Academic Success and Achievement, which we like to call CASA. CASA is home to math tutors, writing tutors, subject tutors, and even online tutoring services as well are offered through our Tutoring Services Center. So you can make an appointment or even, um, like I said, you can have an online appointment as well. There's also the home to disability services in this building as well. So if you needed any disability accommodations for any of your classes, this is where you could go to arrange those as well. We do offer some other programs as well, including supplemental instructors for those more hard or difficult classes and also academic success peer tutors to help our first year students get more acquainted to life as a college student and the workload that it entails. Right in between Casa Purse and Horace Mann is our Ram Tram Shuttle Station, which if you remember from the very beginning of the virtual tour, we mentioned the very end, well now we're here. At this station is where the Ram Tram would pick you up to go to any of the off-campus places where it, it takes you. So for our resident students, you can take the Ram Tram to your off-campus parking lot, which you can park your car at. It's $500 for the year or $350 for the semester. If you choose not to have a car, that's all right. The Ram Tram also takes you to a variety of different places as well. Every 30 minutes, it goes to the Natick Mall, Shoppers World, CVS, Target, Stop and Shop, and some other different places as well. 
You can even call them and they can take you to the AMC movie theater in Framingham or during eight times a day, there is this time designated time when they go to the Framingham commuter rail station as well. So if you want to go into Boston or out to Worcester, you have the option to do that as well. For our commuter students, every 15 minutes it goes to the commuter, the off-campus commuter parking lots as well as the resident parking lots as well. That is the end of our virtual campus tour of Framingham State University. Thank you so much for joining Jess and I as we go around our campus on a virtual tour. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us via email or phone. Our email is admissions at framingham.edu, or you can give us a call at 508-626-4500. We hope to see you actually on campus at some point, but if not, we hope that you enjoyed your virtual campus tour.